Hey, what's good and what's going on? Jim Alfano here at the Brook team at eXp Realty, bringing you James Allen with Movement Mortgage here to shed some information on us. How you doing, James? Hey, Jim. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So um, how's the year starting out for you? Well, you know, it's the 3rd of January today, and uh, I can tell you that all of the people who are who were in the woodwork have come out of the woodwork. So we're two days into the new year in business, uh, in terms of business, and a lot of people are expressing interest in making a move this year. So no surprise with where rates are headed, but uh, it's good activity. And we're happy about it. That's very cool. And it's interesting you're perceiving that right away. It's only the third and you already have that going on. That's great. Hey, just on a high level overview, give us the story of 2023 and maybe a little bit of, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, but a little bit of speculation as to what 2024 might yield for us. Yeah, sure. Obviously, I wish I had a crystal ball because if I did, I would I would just bet on bonds all day and I'd be sipping Mai Tais on the beach. I, I can't tell you for sure, for sure what will happen, but what we can do is look at the past to be indicative of the future, right? So 2023 was all about inflation. If you look back in terms of our economic oversight in the last few years, the Fed's been raising rates. And now everyone knows this. We felt it in our wallets. We felt it in our credit card rates. We felt it in car loans. And of course, we felt it with mortgage rates and rates have gone up. And all of that has been in uh, an effort to slow the economy down a little bit to bring that inflationary number down from its peak at 8.1% in July of 21, or 22 rather, all the way down to, they're hoping to reach a 2% target range. So, And that's the Fed's target range always. They want to keep inflation around 2% because that's how they measure if the economy is healthy or not. And so all of these rate hikes that we've experienced have been in an effort to try to slow things down a little bit, but not too much. So we don't want to we don't want to crush the economy, but we want to slow it down enough that we bring inflation back in target, and um, it's really what the, really what's happened in the last year here. Inflation came all the way down to three point one as of the last reading there, and um, you know in December we got some great news. It was the after a year of we expected it back in May, and then June, July, it just kept pushing out month after month. But you know finally the the inflationary readings were looking good enough at the end of the year that the percentage of likelihood that the Fed would lower rates in March uh, at, from November to December. It went from 0% likely that they would lower rates in March to 30% likely that they would lower rates in March, and then up to 99% likely by May and 100% by June and 100% for months thereafter. So what we're seeing is that the Fed has really risen rates to the point where they're starting to feel more comfortable with where the economy's at. We still are not at our 2% target, but it's not unusual for inflation to trail a few months behind the hikes. So they're starting to show and demonstrate that the temperature is closer to the 2% mark. They don't necessarily feel the need to hike us quite yet. Um, we might see one or two more hikes, but probably we will not, I would think most likely. And uh, you know, they, uh, whether you think they've done a good job or bad job, well, here's what we can say. Inflation's come down. We don't love that rates go up, but one good thing for us now is there's going to be some opportunities you know, in the future here with rates coming back down. So kind of anticipating that uh, we're going to see that swing the other way over the next several months here as things even out, because what we don't want is inflation to go so far low that it goes negative and it becomes recessionary. And that's what the Fed will be trying to do as we move here. So probably we're going to see a pause and then probably we're going to see a whole bunch of rate cuts over the next 12 to 24 months. And I think that that's great news for consumers. It's going to ease up on the wallet. It's going to make things a little bit more affordable in terms of the actual interest rates. Well, James, you know, that's outstanding. I think um, we're going to have a lot of people that have been wanting to do some transactions, upsizing, downsizing, moving to different locations. And also, from what I understand, we have a pretty significant amount of first time home buyers uh, coming to the market if we look at the averages of the age. I think typically it's like a 33 year old that is the average for first time home buyer. And from what I understand, we have years of a lot of first-time home buyers coming to the market. So it's going to be exciting, I think. Yeah, you know, 2023 should be an interesting year. I mean, I think the temptation for consumers is to try to catch the falling knife, right? You want to catch it at the right time and make sure it doesn't hit the ground. The reality is you can't do it. Um, it real estate's like a train. You're either on it or it's left you at the station. And what we're going to experience is this. As rates come down, the counterintuitive thing right now is the consumer's temptation is let me wait until rates come down and then I'll buy. And you can do that if you want to. The only issue is, and what they're not thinking of, is that there's two mechanisms that impact net worth as it relates to real estate. 
One of them, of course, is rates. And we do want rates to come down and we want the lowest rates we can get. That's always true. But the other is price. And if price goes up dramatically, even if rates come down, you're not going to cash flow better and you're not going to have a better net worth overall. And so right now we're projecting that housing prices will go up. And they went up about 6 to 7% this past year, depending on which of the aggregate charts you look at nationally. Um, we're expecting to see that repeat again and possibly again the year after. And so if, if your thought is, well, I'm going to wait until 2025 to buy when rates come down, you can do that. And you'll get a lower rate probably, but you'll also be buying a house that's likely six to 12% more expensive. And so, you know, if you're looking at a a $350,000 house and you pay $385 for it and your interest rate's a point lower, it's going to save you a couple thousand dollars in interest, but it's not going to save you $35,000 of purchase price equity that you just lost by waiting. And so it's interesting. There's a unique opportunity now in the winter of 2024 to kind of have a one, two, three punch win naturally real estate dips between Thanksgiving and I want to say Valentine's Day, right? That little window where they have the holidays, it's winter, your kids are probably sick, nobody wants to go outside. Like people don't really want to move. You can usually get a little bit of softness in the market naturally in that time frame. Um, Right now, my recommendation to people would be if the right house is there, buy it now and do it before rates come down. And here's why. When rates do come down, we're going to see a flood of consumers come back to market who have said, I'm going to wait for rates to come down. And when they do, unfortunately, it's not going to bring enough new inventory to offset that fresh demand. And so when that demand goes through the roof and that inventory only goes up a moderate amount, right? Some people will be selling their houses to move, but they're going to buy new ones, right? That, that, that demand is going to way out drive that supply. And we're going to remain in this really, really competitive cycle. There'll be more houses more options for what you can buy, but the competitive nature of those transactions is going to be higher and that always drives prices up. And here's a little fact that people will find surprising. In every recession in US history, except for 2008, which was a true housing bubble, right? So except for one time, in every recession in US history, housing prices have gone up. And so the general expectation is as rates come down, housing prices will go up. And so the one, two, three punch is if you can get into the winter during a soft lull, You can get in front of these rate cuts where we're going to have huge competition, secure that property at a price where it's going to appreciate with all the competition that comes to market and refinance a year or two from now. That's the one, two, three. I'd like you to win three times and not one time. It's great to get the lowest rate, but you can get that lower rate later. You can never pay less than 390 for a house that you pay 394 today. You're always going to have paid 394 at that time. That makes a lot of sense. And I think undoubtedly, there are tons of people that are really just focused on the rates and not really thinking of anything else was with regards to their purchase. And, you know, when the rates lower, like you said, the competition is going to be pretty fierce, right? So I, the point is well made. Um, it's a value, value proposition to, to listen and to hear us out, you know, and there's another, another thing that could help a lot of people in this state that not everyone is aware of, and it just got refunded. The Connecticut Time to Own program, James, is uh, it's an outstanding program, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we, we've been doing a lot of these, and it's been such a great relief to consumers. So when rates started going out of control, Connecticut did a great job as a state of responding to this. People think they care about the rate, and they do, but what they really care about is affordability, right? They really care about the payment. Like, can I afford this place or not? I used to be able to get X for 2,500 bucks a month. Now I can only get Y for 2,500 bucks a month. So affordability is the challenge that we've encountered as rates have gone up. And Connecticut Housing came to the rescue and said, okay, cool. For first-time homebuyers, we're going to lobby the state. We're going to get some funding, and we're going to allow first-time homebuyers to get 0% interest, down payment assistance. Uh, it could be as low as eighteen thousand seven fifty and as high as fifty thousand dollars, and that money is at zero percent interest and it's forgivable over ten years of living in the property. So you know they don't give you fifty grand right at closing, but what they do is record a loan on the property and it, and it forgives ten percent per year over a ten year time frame. If you stay there for ten years, you never pay a penny of it back. But here's what it does day one: it, a fifty thousand dollar award saves you about. a month, depending on, you know, what rate you actually lock in with Connecticut housing. And so $320 a month to a first time home buyer, it's a lot of money. $3,600 a year is a meaningful amount for a family who's trying to get themselves into their first house. So for that program, 
Um, you have to live in Connecticut for three years. If you haven't lived here for three years, you can still do the regular down payment assistance program, which allows you to get some assistance funding for your down payment and your closing costs, but you can't get the forgivable program. So no matter who you are, if you're a first time home buyer, um, my encouragement is have a conversation with us and let's explore if you qualify for that. In about five minutes on a phone call, we can usually determine if you meet the high level criteria. And if you do, a lot of folks are surprised to find out that they can get into homes with no cash out of pocket. They can get these subsidized programs through the state with forgivable down payment assistance. Really cool opportunity. Now, the program won't be around forever. Uh, it started about 18 months ago and they have funded several rounds. Mm -hmm. They were committed to a $75 million refund through the end of the fiscal year in July. I expect we're probably going to have a gap in like April or May or maybe just June where we run out of money for like a one to three month period. And then they committed another 75 million for the next fiscal year, which starts in July. So we're going to have about 125 to 150 million of funding coming to this program before they shut it off. Um, they might shut it off after that. I expect probably they would, but we've got this cool opportunity now to offer this to first time home buyers, create a more affordable option for you, you know, and help you get into a house for the first time. James, that is absolutely fantastic. And folks, just so you understand, you you to forgive the entire loan from the state, you have to stay in the full 10 years. But if you're in there, it's 10% a year. So That's even right. if you stay three years, they're forgiving 30% of that loan and you're saving money immediately on your monthly payment. So it's a home run. Yeah, exactly. Every, every month, you're if you got a $50,000 award, every month you're in the property, the state is basically forgiving $416.67. So if your payment's two thousand a month and you're getting four hundred bucks of free equity, it's technically you're netting a payment of like fifteen ninety three or four a month or something like that. By the time you move, you'll have gotten five grand forgiven every year. That's real equity that you get to keep. So you know it almost sounds too good to be true, and I get that. Uh, when we first heard about it, I was like, this can't be right. And as we went through it, now we funded dozens and dozens of these loans for people. It's all real, and so I would encourage you if you want to learn about it, give us a call. Let's have a conversation. We can point you to the Connecticut Housing website, you know, where you can read about it yourself and learn about these things, but amazing opportunity. Hey, so look, I'm going to put your, your contact information in the description, James. Folks, reach out to me, reach out to James directly. Let's, let's get you some useful information, run the numbers and, and help you through the process. I appreciate everyone's time, James. I appreciate you working with me here on this interview. And I look forward to, to doing this again, maybe in the future down the road. Always, Jim. Thank you for having right. me. Thanks, guys. Be good. Happy 2024.